Good evening everybody. Tonight I'm going to show you how to create an Oracle database instance using Amazon Web Services and utilizing the free account that you should have signed up for. So one of the biggest paradigm shifts that has happened in the technology industry in the past decade or so has been the proliferation of cloud technology. Amazon uh, started way back, I think, in around 2006 with Amazon Web Services, offering the ability for people to purchase compute or storage on demand without having to be concerned about any of the actual underlying infrastructure. Since that time, many other businesses have, have gotten into this, including Microsoft and Oracle and uh, you know a list too long to mention of, of other players that are in this marketplace. But Amazon is probably far and away the most popular and in probably a lot of folks' um, opinions, one of the, the best providers that's out there. So if you're going to be an effective and really employed database administrator in the future, you're going to have to get comfortable with using cloud technologies and probably are going to be in a situation where you're actually dealing with an environment that is a hybrid between what's called public and private cloud, which is to say virtual instances and machines running both in uh, data centers provided by people like Amazon and also uh, perhaps your company's data center as well. And stitching all these things into a uh, infrastructure is going to be something that you're going to have to contend with. So the purpose of this assignment is going to be getting you comfortable with using uh, one of the most well-known cloud providers out there and uh, getting you comfortable with the general concept of being able to uh, purchase um, database instances from all major vendors uh, on demand and really have them up and going in a matter of minutes which is really uh, quite handy and uh, quite a a change with the way uh, things used to be and probably still are if you're doing uh, internal installations. So I'm here at Amazon.com and I'm going to go ahead and sign into the console. And after I've signed into the console, you see it'll bring me to this Amazon Web Services, uh, I guess you would call it a dashboard. It's really a list of all the various services that you can uh, interact with, program with, uh, do things with. And Amazon really provides an amazing array of uh, on-demand services that you can use to pretty much create uh, really any type of application that you would like. So what we're interested in today is going to be this RDS database service that you see over here on the left hand side. Now besides providing their own proprietary uh, database uh, technology, uh, which is, is probably as good as better as a number of your commercial vendors uh, such as Oracle and Microsoft, they also give you the ability to create database instances uh, from all of your major vendors and also uh, open source uh, such as MySQL and uh, Postgres. So I'm going to click on this RDS link here and it's going to bring me to a screen where I can begin to choose the type of uh, database services I'm instant. Uh, interested in. So uh, what I'm going to do is under this create instance area here I'm going to launch a DB instance and when I click that it gives me a, a menu really of the various databases that I can select and I'm going to select an Oracle database 
and then I'm going to select the uh, Oracle SE which stands for Standard Edition Database because this will fit into our uh, free tier of databases so we won't spend any money uh, firing up this database. So next it's going to uh, ask me some questions about how I plan to uh, use this instance and uh, we're going to want to pay careful attention to sort of follow along with this uh, RDS free usage tier which is the educational component uh, of our account so uh, I'm going to select no here for this uh, multi A to Z deployment and we're just going to stick with this RDS free usage tier Okay, so on this page we're going to be presented with a, a number of options and uh, with Oracle in uh, this particular uh, DB engine that we've picked here, uh, bring your own license is the only option that we have available to us and we're going to be operating under the uh, free usage uh, that Oracle allows for uh, developers on, on small machines. So. Uh, if you recall, uh, or maybe you don't recall, with your free tier in Amazon RDS, there's uh, 750 hours of time available to us using the uh, AZ DB2 micro instance running uh, any of these uh, databases, Oracle being the one that we're interested in. There's 20 gigabytes of storage and then uh, an I.O. amount that we should never approach and then uh, some other uh, free backup storage that comes as a part of our free tier and then obviously using the management console is included in that as well. So uh, if we come back here and look at the uh, what's available to us, we're going to go ahead and select this dbt2 micro uh, instance class because that is inside of our uh, free tier and then we're going to say no again for the a to z deployment also uh, free uh, general purpose ssd 10 gigabytes which would be well more than we would ever need is also within the constraints of our free tier uh, arrangement with uh, Amazon Web Services and then when you get down here you have uh, a number of things that you need to fill in so first is the database instance identifier and I'm going to go ahead and call my database instance ISQA fall 2015 just to make it easy I've picked a simple username you can come up with whatever you'd like to and then you know, I've put in my easy to remember password that I put in with all of my uh, development machines here. So I'm going to go ahead and click next step after doing that. And you'll see it'll pop me up uh, another screen uh, walking me through the sort of basics of getting a uh, database up and going. So I'm going to accept the defaults for the um, private cloud settings and um, you know all this stuff here I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just select uh, to create a new security group I don't care where they put the instance there's a, a number of uh, data centers around the country they can go ahead and put it wherever they want to and then this database name is automatically filled in as uh, Oracle uh, or ORCL which is sort of the default you see all over the place I'm going to change this just to sort of mix things up a little bit. So I'm going to give this database the name of uh, Test AWS just to just to you know make sure that I'm I'm not going totally by the book here. We'll go with the default database port. Um, then the uh, we'll take the default DB parameter groups. Uh, we're really just uh, allowing AWS to hand us a working instance of a database, and uh, the defaults will be just fine for us. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and accept um, all of the defaults that are here, and then we'll go ahead and click this launch DB instance, 
And now Amazon Web Services is actually going to go about the process of automatically provisioning a, a database for our purposes. So this should take, you know, maybe five, ten minutes, uh, you know, maybe a little less to complete. And when it's done, uh, you'll see that you have an Oracle database available to use uh, in your DB instances. So if I click my v to view my DB instances, you can see that uh, I have one that I've uh, created before and then I have another one that is being created for me as we speak. So I'm going to go ahead and wait while that process completes and eventually it should tell me that it's available and we'll be able to go ahead and connect to the database.